Hello. Uh, tonight we're here with uh, Don Rivers, who is running for governor. Uh, would you like to go ahead with your two-minute introduction? Hello, everyone. I um, sorry that we have some technicalities here, but I'm Don L. Rivers, running for position of governor to be your next governor. And uh, as your governor of Washington State, I will work to enhance those areas that have been accomplished and to correct for, to further correct the things that have been wrongfully done. Um, I've been in Washington State for 45 years. Uh, one of the first governors I worked with was Dixie Lee Ray. I've been an advisor to more than, I believe, six governors, as well as a, a bunch of elected officials, 148. Um, I've been able to be involved in the growth of Washington State and look forward to being able to move us forward into an area where we're more safe than we are, more safe and sound than we are right now. I bring to you the opportunity of bringing Washington State together on all ethnic groups. I've traveled worldwide. Um, I, I believe definitely in working with people and resolving problems. That's my one of my main areas is I know how to resolve problems. Um, I deal with uh, interacting people, with interaction with people very, very strongly. And I, I believe that it's a time now that because of the virus, we need to move forward. I thank you for this opportunity to speak with you and we can go forward. Thank you. Um, now we're gonna move into our four prepared questions and uh, the responses to these are two minutes in length. Um, and we're gonna go in the order of Mackenzie, Liz, um, Brittany, then Sherry. Um, so Mackenzie, would you like to ask question one? Sure, oh. that, thank you. Okay. Wait, one, one moment, I'm sorry. Um, also, Alice is keeping time and so she'll let you know when you're running close to uh, 30 seconds and then 10 seconds. Okay. Okay, uh, so the first one is Washington State is facing a significant decline in revenues due to the impact of the coronavirus. Will you pledge to veto budget cuts to needed public services and what taxes would you look to raise in order to deal with this crisis? Um, good question. The budget cuts would have to be something that a special, I believe a special legislative body would be able to put together to look at these areas and um, find out areas in which we can do some trimming to make sure that our budget is more balanced and in line. Um, I think those things can be done if we definitely look at the different areas of government and uh, the areas that are significant in Washington state to deal with the fact that we do not have revenue coming in. Uh, we do have a surplus. That surplus probably is being utilized. So it will be an overview of where we're at. And then from that point, moving forward to probably do some downsizing or some critical mass thinking of how can we can move forward and prepare ourselves at the same time to make sure that we get businesses in Washington State back on the map and moving forward with revenue. Great, thank you. Um, question two, Liz. All righty, um, you can hear me all right? Yes. Oh yeah, all I right. Good. All right, all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask this wonderful question. What is your plan for dealing with Washington State's regressive upside down tax code? Will you lead on taxing large corporations and wealthy individuals, do you support a progressive income tax, capital gains tax, or a more robust estate tax, and a tax on companies paying excessive compensation to some employees? Well, I, I'm definitely looking in the area of a progressive tax. Um, I believe that because we are the most regressive tax in the nation and uh, we need to have some balance there. Uh, there are also some areas 
with taxation that we can help those that are the poor and also make sure that we um, tax corporations. But um, it's going to be something that really has to be looked at because we also have to make sure that we have proper health care because a lot of people have lost their jobs. So a lot of taxing, the taxation, we're going to fall short in. So it, looking at how we can make sure we bring in revenue and get things moving back as quick as we possibly can on the safe side is an area that we can look at to deal with the different tax clauses that we have. I think some of them need, will need to be froze, uh, put uh, to the side and dealt with from a different point of view of how we move forward and help everybody to be safe and sound as well as to have revenue enough to feed their families and support their businesses. So I would, I would say to you on taxation, that would have to be a whole discussion between the legislator, the legislation, okay, thank you, legislators and myself into an area of amendments to make sure that we move forward properly. Thank you. Um, question three, Brittany. What is your plan for making Washington State a leader on climate issues? Do you support a just transition to deal with climate change, such as the Green New Deal, which would bring carbon emissions down to zero in the next decade or two, while investing in those most impacted, who are often low-income and marginalized communities of color? Well, um, can you re repeat that question? I'm more interested in the last part of what you said. I couldn't hear that that good. Of course. Uh, what is your plan for making Washington State a leader on climate issues? Do you support a just transition to deal with climate change, such as the Green New Deal, which would bring carbon emissions down to zero in the next decade or two, while investing in those most impacted, who are often low-income, marginalized communities of color? Okay. I believe um, the, tax, the area of um, climate change, we've approached it properly. I also feel that to get to zero emissions, we, we need to follow a robust plan that Morocco uh, has done. And they're looking to do their, uh, making sure that they're in line, their guidelines fit. It's done somewhere by 2030 to 2040. I believe between the uh, resources that we use and the carbon monoxide that's in the air, that we can look at making sure that we are getting the um, carbon down to the point of as close as we can to zero. So I would look for a whole bunch of different ways to design that to make sure it happens. But making, like I said in the beginning, I'm looking to enhance the things that have already been accomplished. So finding further uh, further ways to make sure that we're moving forward is something I definitely will be doing. I look at the fact of the cold trains in uh, our environment, and I know that people have to change at the same time in order for the climate to get better and change. Great, okay, thank you. Uh, question four, uh, Sherry. Hi, um, the Trump administration has thrived on xenophobia against immigrants. What steps would you take to protect, protect and uplift the immigrant community in Washington, especially undocumented immigrants? And what do you propose to do about private immigration detention facilities located in Washington State? I believe that Washington State as a sanctuary state has not been developed as such. I am definitely for the fact that we were a salad bowl and now we are melting pot, we have kept things so much in the black and white format that we have not really addressed the areas. We've, we've given handouts, but we haven't given hand ups. Uh, and we also haven't made sure that we understand the different cultures and different dialects of language and what the real needs are. I think we are doing, we're trying to say, Okay, you, your culture, here's an area over here. Uh, you can uh, develop yourself over here and in turn, and we'll come to you and fix it from that. But I think we really need to be sincere about hearing the needs of those immigrants as, as, as much, 
as much as making sure that we have them registered. We may not have them as citizens, but we can put together a registration for them that will make them feel more involved in Washington State as a citizen and probably will help prepare them to be a citizen quicker. Great, thank you. Um, so now we're gonna move into follow-up questions and the responses to these are one minute in length. Um, does anybody have a follow-up question to ask? Um, if so, uh, raise your hand or uh, you know, put a note in the chat box for me. Alice, yes. So you are running um, against current Governor Jay Inslee. Um, I'm wondering if you would like to um, take the opportunity to tell us what you, why you're choosing to run against him and what you think you would do differently. Well, I've been around um, our elected officials all my adult life. I've been mentored by them. Uh, former Governor Albert Rosalini, uh, Norm Dix, uh, McDermott, and others. And I've been an advisor at the same time as being mentored. So I know the area well, and I have been very versed in dealing with issues. I've, I, I remember when Christine Gregoire, as governor, had an issue with jails, and seconds. she invited me to help her resolve that. Same with Gary Lott. Uh, so I'm, I'm very versed in understanding. I even grew up resolving problems. That's my forte, uh, bringing people together and resolving the issues that we have going forward. And this COVID-19 is all hands on deck. Ten seconds. So I believe that at this time, it's a time to move forward. I mean, it's like, a, it's, I, I know I'm probably going over, but to me, the situation we're in is like a marriage. We need to do more. Great, thank you. Um, Jay, you have your hand up. Hi, thank you. Uh, so on votesmart.org in 2018, I don't, I'm not sure if it was an interview with them or if they just pulled a quote from somewhere, but it said they had asked a question, if you support repealing the 2010 Affordable Care Act and the response was yes. So my question is, do you still feel that way? And uh, what would you be in favor of replacing it with if so? Um, the Affordable Care Act, I believe, is an issue that needs to be really looked at to the point where um, something else needs to be designed. I would be willing to, at now, since we've moved further in another direction, look at the boundaries of that and probably have inclusion of some of that, but definitely look at, at uh, changing it. Uh, I'm not totally versed on it right now because I've been dealing with so much issues in the area of COVID-19 um, in the jails and stuff. So right now I would say, I would love to refer back to that after I got a chance to look at it more often, a little bit more and give you a more exact uh, answer to that question. But I'll definitely do that for you. Great, thank you. Um, any further questions? Well. I have one. Um, I, I was actually going to let you take a minute to um, talk a little bit more about what you've been doing around the COVID-19 and the jails. Thank you. Um, when, from my understanding, everyone was caught off guard. Every state was caught off guard. And those that were in the know didn't know how to move forward. Uh, so we were not prepared in the area of pandemics and, and disasters. What I noticed was I've always done things behind the scene without having the position. So I, I definitely was one of the first ones in the, to seconds. reach out and put on Facebook the fact that we needed to make sure that we had uh, drive-by testing. I was one of the first ones to bring that out, me and my staff. The other thing was the uh, spacing out in the jail system and letting some of the prisoners go but having ankle bracelets on them. Those are things that we put forth. And now I, the, the governor has several advisors and you can't really govern without advisors. So I'm looking forward to make sure that we hit those things the right way. But we, we were making sure we prepare for things to deal with it in the moment today. Great, thank you. 
Um, any further questions? Further questions? I have one. Um, so if elected, what would your top three priorities be? The first priority would be getting ourselves back to normal as quickly as possible, whatever we, we will never be the same again, but that would be definitely something that I would work on day and night to have different meetings with different um, the, the police departments, the, uh, uh, the corporate owners, the, uh, making sure that small businesses are ready to move forward. Uh, the second thing would be the health care. We've got to make sure that we have uh, viable uh, health care because a lot of people have lost their health care, and, and that's important. Then I would look at our economy to make sure that we can sustain ourselves and um, move forward by having some type of revenue come in without losing all of our gains that we've lost. Thank you. Um, further questions? Mr. Rivers, um, as someone who's running for governor, I wonder specifically what your criticisms of the current governor's management of the state might might be. Could you could you um, expand along those lines a little bit? Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Inslee is a friend, uh, an acquaintance. Uh, I can explain it to you in a, a way of saying our styles are different. I'm more proactive than reactive. I'm more um, aggressive in the area of making sure that we have an outlook. I'm um, not, I don't practice medicine, but I do preventive medicine. And I think that's the way we should do that from our health care center all the way through. Uh, I think what Mr. Seconds. Inslee has done, he, he's not really, at, he's had to learn how to be versed among different cultures. Uh, that's not a, a good thinking process of his. It's dynamic just to keep things steady as she goes. I'm Ten aggressive and in in visionary to move things forward. Thank you. <clears throat> Any further questions? Um, Jason, yes, go ahead. Yes, uh, Mr. Rivers. Uh, uh, in institutional uh, racism has been uh, going on for today. Um, how do you uh, navigate or what would you suggest uh, the best way to tear down um, that institution? Oh, thank you. Um a lot of the wording from uh, the time that uh, I was up bring, being brought up in Detroit, Michigan and went through the riots and all those shutdowns of, of martial law and, and things and understanding the um, um, Aryan nation and everything. I've come up with a different process that I would be teaching our, um, what is it, uh, millennials X and Y's. And that process is, I'm not looking at it from a perspective seconds. of racism. I'm looking at it now as a perspective point of saying opportunists. And if I can get our people of color to understand, we have to move when the opportunity is right. I've marched all over Washington and I've been successful because I, I see the moment and the opportunities and I take the Ten negative seconds. and I look for the positive values in it. So I would do more of that. Okay, thank you. We have any other questions? All right, well, actually, we're at minute 19, so that's perfect. Um, would you like to go ahead with a um, one minute wrap up? Yes, I would like to thank all of you for taking the time at this time uh, of our lives to uh, keep democracy strong and, and move the process forward. Um, and, and believing in people. And um, we, we've had times that we've practiced tribalism and we felt we were safe in doing it. 
but it's got us to the point where we are now. Now we have to believe and trust in people. But I want you to understand and think about something. The platform that you put forward, I 100% agree with just about 99% of your platform. I, I definitely want to say this. I want our young people to have more morals, values, principles, and ethics. And I know how to go about doing that and putting it into education. I thank you for this opportunity. I look forward to meeting with you on any question. I ask for your support and your endorsement. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Rivers.